of daughters in the past six, seven, eight months have come up to me. My daughter is getting older. She's beyond 30 now. I'm looking for someone. How? And when I, when I hear from a father saying that their daughter is 30 or above and they're looking for someone, first question that comes to my mind, why did you delay? Because there is a certain ripe age. You know, fruits, you go to stop and shop or you go to shop right, you go pick up the, in the produce session, you go pick up the bananas so you, or apples or oranges. Or, you first look at the fruit. If it's ripe, you quickly grab it. If it's more than ripe, do you grab it? No. I hate to give that example, but that's the reason. When the boy hears that the girl is 30, 32, 35, the door is closed. Because there is a hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Marry the al-wadud al-wadud is another riwayah of Rasulullah Sallallahu He said, marry the single woman and the one that's young. He didn't give an age. He didn't say this is the number, that this number he married. He said, marry a virgin, marry a young woman, and one who is uh, closer. Why? Because the more older the woman becomes, the less likelihood of having a child. And there's another hadith. I know sometimes these feminist movements and these people, uh, you know, women empowerment, they attack Islam. They say, oh, you guys just want baby producing machines. <laughs> no. The, the Sharia tells us that the purpose of marriage, of course, is have to husband and wife and spouse and, you know, tranquility. But one of the byproduct of marriage is the offspring, the children, the progeny. And there is an authentic hadith of Rasulullah. He said, have a lot of children. UN tells us, UNESCO tells us, United Nations tells us, World Health Organization tells us, World Food Bank tells us, have little children. In Europe, the average size in European countries of, of, of family is 2.1, 2.2, meaning just husband, wife, and one child. In some countries, it's just 1.5, and some are two, very rare or two. Majority of European countries, the, they have stopped having children. So now their population is aging. They have more old people and less young people. Old people, nothing wrong with that. But they can't have workforce. They can't bring tax money to the economy. Old people, as they retire, they become a burden on the society, on the government. Who gives the tax money? Who gives the more you know, revenue to the state? Young people. So when you clamp down having children, Yes, temporarily you solve the problem, oh, population control, but 20, 30, 40 years down the road, you are now stuck. Now, everybody, every country is thinking of immigration, opening immigration. Why does Canada have open immigration? Why America has open immigration? Why other countries have open immigration? Because they know that their own population is very little. I was uh, doing a research here in America. The <laughs> this is funny. The research I found online is that there was a website that mentioned that the highest ratio of children in America is amongst who? <laughs> Which is a good thing. Jews is the, the, the least amongst the Jews and the Christians and others. Uh, sorry, I mixed up. Christians and then the Jews. So Muslims having the most. Now, I, I want to make this interactive. Before I give certain guidelines from the Hadith and from Quran, what should you look for in a husband or a wife? I have a pop quiz for you. How many of you are married to one wife? One wife, one wife people, married to one. Yeah, only one. Raise your hand. Okay, keep your hand raised, I wanna see. I wanna see who are, these are the, these are the warriors. These are courageous men. They have the courage. Okay, how many, put your hand down. How many of you are married to two wives? I can't raise my hand. Mashallah, we have one. No, no, planning is not. You have two wife already. You have two wife or are you joking? No, expired is gone. Alive, alive too. How many of you have three wives? No, okay. Now, my question is, the reason I asked you if you have one wife, that my question is, when you, when you were marrying your first wife, what were you looking for? Who can give me some answers? 
when you were looking for proposals, when you talk to your father and mother, even you can tell me. There's no haraj, you know. You married 50 years ago. Tell me, what were you looking for? What was you looking for in a wife? I'm talking, the, I'm talking with the husband because the husband is in front of me. The sisters are downstairs, so I can't ask them. Or maybe you can give a microphone downstairs so I can ask the sisters what were they looking for in a husband. What were you looking for in wife? Religious. Religious. Good. One, one criteria, brother said. Religious. Okay. Give me another one. You're looking for nothing. <laughs> he was just looking for it. A any wife. Your? Nothing. Mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> Sister downstairs, she's there. <laughs> Say it in Arabic, it'll be better. <laughs> English is English is very poor language. In Arabic, hello, hello. Brother said beauty. First he said religious. Second he said beauty. What else? Rich. Respect. Very good. Oh, rich. You, you're choosing all the good ones, huh? Rich, beautiful, <laughs> religious. What's left? <laughs> love. Respect, brother said. Love. What else? What else? Will, come on, you must be looking for something. Don't be shy. I want to make it interactive so that I know, I know you, you have already married. Listen, whatever answer you give, don't worry. Your wife is not going to beat you up tonight because you already married her. I have some bad news. <laughs> Those of you who are married, I have some bad news for you. The bad news is, you want me to give you the bad news? Bad news is you're stuck with your wife. You can't go anywhere. So whether you like her or not, you got to be there till death do you apart. The only way you can separate now is death. Because divorce is not an option for us, at least in the muhazzab, in the, you know, the respectable, honorable families. So whatever answer you give, you have nothing to worry about. You're stuck. What were you looking for when you married 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Huh? Cultural similarity, very good. The reason I'm asking these questions is because it's your answers are related to my topic. And I'll tell you how it, 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 it affects. So Bada said culture norms or culture similarities. So it's easier. Because if you marry someone from a different culture, it becomes difficult. What else? Akhlaq. I was looking for that. Thank you, brother. Someone at least said akhlaq, character. Character, brother said respect, character, respect, love, these three are interconnected. What else were you looking for? When you were looking for your first wife, I know you're still, I know you're still looking for a second wife, we're not worried about that. I'm not going to talk, my wife told me today, don't you dare talk about second wife today. I said, okay, okay. I'm, I promised my wife today, I guess I'm a very scared husband, I promised my wife, I'm not going to talk about second wife. So Najiba, you don't have to worry about it. Wish to sab gaya hai. Umi pe dunia gaya hai. Hazar khayish hai hezi ki har khayish pe dam nikle. Bhot nikle mere complete. Ya ab logo aati nahi shiro shayadi. Har man nikle. Translation. Translation of this uh, poetry in Urdu that I just recited is: I have thousands of desires. I have thousands of desires. You ask somebody what are desires, every male, every man in this building right now will say, yeah, I have a desire to marry four wife, but I can't. That's a different issue whether you can or not. I have thousands of desires and they are such high desires that on each desire of that thousand, my soul dies. And many desires went out of my soul, such that my wishes never came true. That was the translation of the poetry. So, coming back to the question, what were you looking for when you married your wife? Kids. kids. Okay, good. That's a good, um, you know, they can have kids or not. What else? We had love, we had the respect, we have akhlaq, character, beauty, richness, cultural similarities. What else? When I asked how many people are married, so many hands went up. Now everybody is khamush, silent. What happened? Like you, you know what I'm trying to sh prove to you? Majority of us have no idea what kind of wife we should look for. Back 50 years ago, we used to tell our parents, Baba, Mama, I want to get married. So Baba, Mama went outside shopping together, holding hands. Yeah, this looks good for our son. Let's get them. So the son never had any desire. This is what happened 50 years ago. Because that's our culture, our society, that used to happen. 
We have to have a vision. I have to have a vision. You know what? Marriage is not a joke. You know that? How many of you are married? You raised it, right? Marriage is not a joke. How long have you been married? Five years, 10 years, 15 years? You know it's not a joke. It requires commitment. It requires effort. It requires hard work. It requires dedication. It requires a lot of demands in marriage. So Rasulullah told us that when he said, I'm, I'm coming there. Hold on, hold on. Hold your horses. Hasbuk hisan. fil kharij. Keep your horses outside. Rasulullah gave us the philosophy of marriage. Philosophy. You have to understand the falsafa, philosophy of marriage. Even if you're married 20 years now, 30 years, 50 years, you can still go back and correct the mistakes you've done in the past 50, 40 years. So, you can still go back and say, honey money, I made the big, big blunder, so now we're going to start again. Close the book, we start a new chapter in life. This will be good. The philosophy of marriage in Islam is that, especially for men, rijal, because Allah said in the Quran, al-nisa. Men are the caretakers and protectors and the founders. You can put a lot of translation words in this word of qawam. Qawam doesn't just mean financial caretaker. It means the caretaker spiritually, physically, mentally, financially, everything, socially. It also means the person who is in the driving seat of the car trying to uh, trying to develop a whole nucleus family. Family is made of what? Family is made of what? A husband and a wife. So Rasulullah told the men, the men, Rajal, in the Ummah, that when you are about to start a family, make sure you are very, very cautious and cognizant of who you choose as your wife because this will determine your family. This will determine your family, and then your family will then decide the Ummah of Muhammad There's a big vision behind this marriage. Marriage is not just, oh, let me get married, I want to save myself from zina, let me get married. No, there's a falsafa, there's a philosophy in marriage. And what Rasul is saying, that the philosophy of marriage in Islam is that you are sowing the seeds, you're putting the foundation stone, the bricks of your future nasal. You know, nasl, we, nasl is an Arabic word and an Urdu word. Aapki aani wali nasle, aapki is ek fasle se impact hongi. Kya gate ho? Urdu bhi sara bhul gaya. Your one decision of who you choose or your spouse is going to impact on your future generations. How will your future generations come on this earth? We will marry, live our life, and we will die. We'll go. Like our parents left, or our grandparents left, or our great grand Where are they today? They're in their graves. They're gone. We are the product of who? Our great-grandparents. So whoever they chose as our grandmother, whoever they chose our grandfathers, great-grandfather, whoever they chose our great-grandmothers, it depends and it, it also decides, it also uh, impacts how the future generation is. i give you a small example. Why am I saying this? i give you a small example real life example of a case that came to me for counseling and I keep announcing that people come and ask for appointment for counseling this case the grandfather who al jad grandfather arab palestinian came from dirdabwan people from palestine know dirdabwan arif qariya dirdabwan very famous in past grandfather al jad the grandfather came in the 40s Wilayatul Muttahida to America, right? In the 40s. As a shab, young man, 18, 20, he came as a grandfather here. He was, who was he? Muslim. From where? Dirdawal, which is a village in Palestine. He comes here, he, he marries a Jewish woman. Muslim? Marry? Who? Now you will say, oh yeah, but Imam, it's okay. You can marry Christian and Jewish. It's Ahl Kitab. Fine. Khalas, fine. Wait. Listen to the story. He married Jewish woman. Marry and live together. She influenced so much, he leave Islam. He didn't become a Jew. He became mulhid, atheist. Khalas. No deen. Wife, Jew. Grandfather, 
no longer Muslim. Children, two son, uh, one son, one daughter. Both, they choose neither Jew nor atheist, agnostic. I mean, sorry, atheist. No Christian, no Jew. Children, one son, one daughter. Son, marry Christian woman. And he remain atheist, but the wife, Christian. They have a son. So grandfather is there. Are you with me? Khaliq Mai, huh? Where are we now? The son, not grand, son marry a Christian woman. They have a son. He grows up. He asks, what is our religion? I see father, you have no religion. I see mother, she's Christian. I see grandfather, no religion. I see grandma, Jew. Confused. 20 years, he grow, the son, he grow 20 years, he takes shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Grandfather, I'm giving you the whole story. This is real life. Somebody in, somebody in New Jersey. The reason this came to me, because the person, the son, who became Muslim, he said, my father, my mother, my grandfather, my grandfather, everybody's against me. They, want, they don't want me to be Muslim. Imam, please save me. So we help, we counsel, we talk, we try to protect him. But look, look at the qadr, qadr Allah. The grandfather gave him dir dawan as a Muslim. He said, forget Islam, bye-bye Islam. Many, not many, two generations later, young boy who's confused, reads Quran, and he comes into a masjid, he says, I want to become Muslim. Allahu Akbar. That's why it's very, imp this, is a, this is a success story, a good story. But the people, I asked this boy, what, what's the condition of your father, mother, grandfather? No, no Muslim. He's the only Muslim. But his grandfather was, once upon a time, he made a choice of a spouse. What happened? Whole family became non-Muslim. But Allah brings someone to Islam. And now this young boy, 20 year old Shah, he cries in front of him. Imam, make dua for my father. Make dua for my grandfather. He's Palestinian. So if he's Palestinian and his father is born in the USA, he is also Palestinian because his blood is from Dirdabwe. Allahu Akbar. Who we choose as our wife will determine what's going to happen to my future generation. Imagine you marry a Muslim woman and you're a Muslim. But imagine someone, your grandson or your granddaughter or your great-grandson or your great-granddaughter. They marry a non-Muslim lady, a Hindu, a Buddhist, a atheist, agnostic. And then he loses Islam. And then their future generation is your great-grandchildren are all non-Muslim. You came to America, you came from Muslim country, you married your wife Muslim, you had your children Muslim, you died, you went in the barzakh, in the grave. But your third generation, your fourth generation became what? Non-Muslim. On Yom Al-Qiyamah, what face are we going to show to Allah SWT? Marriage is a serious business. It's not just you and your wife. It's your future planning, future generation. Qiyamah, Allah knows when Qiyamah is going to come. Until Qiyamah, is our generation going to keep coming? Yes or no? Yes or no? Only two people said yes. Rest of you, I think you close the door. No more children for you, right? <laughs> you say no more generation coming. Allah says in the Quran, Allah makes whoever he wants aqeem. What is aqeem? Childless couple. No children. What happens to a childless couple? The end, khalas. No future generation. They have no children. So how are they going to get grandchildren? Aqeem. This is from Allah. Yajal man yasha zukrana in us this whole ayah in Surah Shura Allah says that he he does he wishes to give somebody a boy, he gives somebody a girl, he gives somebody a boy and girl too, or he makes somebody childless. No boy, no girl. Your generation gone. Nobody will remember you because you have no children. Today, how people remember us, how they remember me and you? You are the father, you are the son of who? So and so. You are the daughter of who? So and so. Each insan here has an identity. Shanakh, you are a product of your past. They'll say, oh, he's the grandson of Fulan ibn Fulan. Oh, mashallah, your, your grandfather came from Pakistan. He's this big person. Sure, yeah, you are the grandson of that. Yes, this is connection. So who you choose as your wife is very, very important.
and who you choose as your husband is very, very important because our goal and desire is what? That after we die, our children and our children's children and our generations to come remain on what? Christianity? Islam. You know, sometimes I have sleepless night. I can't sleep on the pillow. And I cry. The pillow gets wet. Thinking, what if one of my future generation is no longer Muslim? Allahu Akbar. It makes me cry. We have seen it with our eyes. I went to California once for a trip on Why Islam, and someone introduced me. This person, we were giving dawah in Why Islam. And they said, this person, his grandfather came from India, and he was an imam, sheikh over here in this area. And what is this person? He's the grandson. Of who? Imam. So why are we giving dawah to him? Oh, he's no Muslim. I what? Imam's grandson. We're not even talking about four generations, three, just two generations. His son, grandson. Imam is gone, he's dead, he's buried in California in the grave. His grandson, we, the brothers, local brothers say, let's give dawah to him. Why? Why is it important? Oh, because his grandfather was an imam in masjid. He used to give khutbah on the member, and everybody used to listen. Allahu Akbar. I started crying that day. The biggest fear I have, the biggest thing that makes me cry, our future generation, if they don't say La ilaha illallah, Allah is going to hold me first. Why you come to this country? Did you think about it? Why you marry this wife? Or you, why you marry that? Look, your grandson, your granddaughter, no longer Muslim. Yes, it will come to us. Allah will ask us. That is why Rasulullah told us, when you are choosing a spouse, make sure you choose one of the four, I mean, sorry, make sure you choose the, the, the top choice as religion, a deen. He said, Tunka al Mara li Arba. A woman is married for four reasons. Imma li Jamaliha, either for her beauty, Imma li Maliha, or for her money. She's, she's very beautiful. She is better than Horain. You just see her and you. <sighs> this is it. Mama, I want this one. Let me tell you, if you do that, life is going to be miserable. Because if you don't pray, if you don't fast, what good is the beauty, Jamal? Or you say, oh, look at that Lamborghini. Who's coming out of the Lamborghini? Oh, mama, I want to marry this one. <laughs> A woman driving my Lamborghini? This is the best wife you can have in life. Yeah. Today she's rich, she has Lamborghini. Tomorrow she played the lotto, she lost everything, she had to sell the Lamborghini, she had to sell your house also, your ring, your watch, you're on the road. Now you say, Mama, I choose the wrong wife. This is what Rasul is saying. Tunkahal Mara Ali Arba. A woman is married for four reasons. Either she's married for her beauty, or Limaliha, or Linasabiya, or she's married for her nasab, for her status. Like she's the daughter of the president. Or the daughter of the king, or daughter of the mayor, daughter, daughter of the minister, daughter of some very influential person. Oh, it's good. Let me marry, so my life will be very good. I'm going to be the son-in-law. Damadunga, raj karunga, to sare log mere piche honge. See, the desire and motive behind your marriage will dictate what happens in your marriage. If you married for money, money never remains forever. Today there is money, tomorrow there is honey only. After money, only honey left. <laughs> what are you going to do, honey, without the money? Say, oh, now you look very ugly. No honey with the money. Today, they have money. Tomorrow, no money. Today, they are beautiful. Tomorrow, they look, start looking old. And you say, oh, this is not the right choice. Today, they are the daughter of a very influential person. Tomorrow, the father retired or he died. No longer influence. And look at the wisdom of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He ended the hadith with the fourth one: "Wa imma li diniha." Or you marry a woman for her deen, her taqwa, her khushya of Allah. How much she is fearing Allah subhanahu wa taala? How much is she worried about Allah subhanahu wa taala? How much is she worried about akhirah, qiyamah? And then he ends the hadith by saying, "Fasfar bi zat al-din tarbat yadah." Subhanallah. He said, grab the one with deen. Forget the money, forget the beauty, forget the status. Grab the one, the woman with the deen. Your hands will be flowing, overflowing. 
ما معنى the people ask ulama what does it mean over what is rasul sir meaning by my hands are overflowing money baraka blessing na'ma baraka money is not always the best blessing there are many ways health is a blessing children are a blessing all right qana is a blessing you have a wife a spouse which has qana that she is happy with your salary you just earn 500 dollars she said no problem i'm willing to live with you for 500 i don't need to <laughs> sorry sisters don't mind but the biggest problem i see in my office when they come husband and wife couple the wife always saying oh he don't give money oh he don't give money oh they give money oh same thing repeat again again money 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 i said sister calm down relax be happy with what is he giving you what he's providing for you you keep giving him stress tension 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 stress more money more money more money he's going to do one job two job three job he's going to keep on working hard and bring him money and you will never get satisfied and this is the hadith of rasul sallam he said bani adam meaning the son and daughter of adam will never get satisfied even if they have two mountains of gold so we need to understand that deen is the most important thing. And that's what Allah says in Surah Nur, Surah 24, in verse 32. وَأَنْكِهُ الْأَيَامَ مِنْكُمْ وَالصَّالِحِينَ مِنْ إِبَادِكُمْ وَإِمَائِكُمْ إِيَّكُونُوا فُقَرَاء Listen carefully. إِيَّكُونُوا فُقَرَاء يُغْنِرُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Allah is saying, وَاللَّهُ وَأَسْنُ عَلِيمُ Allah is saying translation, and marry the unmarried among you and the righteous among your males and females and if they are poor don't look at their money if they're poor if the boy is poor if the girl is poor don't worry about it if the boy or girl are poor either one is poor or both are poor don't worry about it allah will make them rich who is saying this allah allahu akbar allahu akbar Subhanallah. This ayah is so true. I've seen many examples of this ayah in my life. In front of my eyes. A boy came to ask a man for his daughter. He didn't have that much. He's not very rich. And the man, the father of the daughter, he believed in Islam. He believed in this ayah in Surah Nur. Tawakkar Allah. He said, go ahead. No problem. Where, where there are other fathers who say, no, you, you, what you, how are you going to feed my daughter? Or how are you going to give my... You, us as fathers, there are many fathers sitting here. Us as fathers, the first thing we think about our daughter, hmm, how are you going to feed my daughter? It's not my concern. Has Alisa, has Alisa him, him me? This is not my concern. You know why? Because Allah is a razzaq. Yes, I know many fathers argue with me. They say, but brother Imam, how you say this? I have to make sure that my daughter is happy. I say, how can you make sure? How can you make sure and guarantee your daughter is going to be happy? Today the boy has a $100,000 salary. Tomorrow he's on the road, he has no salary. Did you make the guarantee? Did you insure? Allah is the insurer. Allah is the guarantor. Allah says you marry someone on their khuluq, on their akhlaq, on their deen, on their taqwa, even if they don't have money, in yakunu fuqara, yughnihim Allah in fath. Allah will make them rich. And if you rely on Allah, hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. When you rely on Allah, Allah is the best of planners. So many fathers have said, Imam, thank you. I believed in this and I practiced this and I got the best son-in-law. I said, yes, of course, because Allah is promising you. It's not me. It's not even Rasul Sallam. It's Allah in the Quran directly in Surah Nur, verse 32 saying to us that rely and trust on Allah. Don't go chasing money. Many fathers of daughters, they're always asking. <laughs> SubhanAllah. One brother told me, a young boy, 22, he said, I went to propose, I mean, I went to go and ask for the daughter from this brother. Because the, the brother was uh, Egyptian, you know, Arab, and the father was Pakistani, and the daughter is Pakistani. So he came up to me and said, what's wrong with you Pakistani fathers? I said, yeah, I'm very sorry. I apologize on behalf of all Pakistani fathers. I know what you mean. He said, but I didn't even tell you anything. I said, I know. Before you tell me, I know what you're going to tell. He asked the daughter from that father, and the first thing he said, what's your salary? He don't ask his name, he don't ask his father's name, he don't ask where you're living. He said, what's your salary? Is it less than six figure or above six figure? And I'm, I'm not making fun of anybody because I am Pakistani myself. And I know how Pakistani fathers or Indian fathers or Bangladeshi, this is in South Asia. Yikira is in South Asian milk. 
This is a problem in South Asian culture. I've seen many Arab fathers, some of them may not be, but many Arab fathers, I see they don't ask about money because they have more tawakkal on Allah. Because, they, they, because Arabic is their language, their mother tongue, they read these ayahs. What is Allah telling us? We need to know what the Quran is telling us. Quran is saying, if you are poor, Allah will make you rich. Not the father-in-law. And some father-in-laws, they do a big mistake. They pamper the daughter. They give the car, they give an apartment, they give the fridge and this and everything. Take everything. You've made the son-in-law nikam wanta too. Because now he's not going to do anything. He says, oh, everything's coming from the father-in-law. So I better just relax and just have, hey, tell your dad to give me this also. Tell your dad to give me this also. <laughs> you want to, let, let me tell you sisters one thing. You want to enjoy the luxuries of your husband. Because in that is sukoon. The luxury that your father gives you, it's temporary. It will wither out. So may Allah SWT give us tawfiq. We end with that. It's time for dinner. May Allah give us tawfiq to choose. Remember, in conclusion, there are four qualities that Rasulullah said. There's nothing wrong in choosing someone that is beautiful. Don't take wrong. The hadith is not saying, Rasulullah is not discouraging someone to choose, uh, don't choose a rich person or don't choose a beautiful person. Don't choose someone with the influence or status. What he's saying is, first, for, make sure you choose deen first. I had a sister called the other day, uh, you know, a 25 year old sister, she's getting married, and her parents pr proposed someone for her. And I said, What's wrong, sister? What's the issue? Can you please talk to my father? I said, What happened? Oh, my father is forcing me to marry this person. And when I asked this person, Do you pray five times a day? He says, oh, Sometimes. So sh I don't want to marry this man. So am I doing something haram by not listening to my dad? Before I give you my answer, what I told her, what is your answer? Is she doing something haram? How many of you say yes? Raise your hand. She has the right to say no. But the father, no, 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 no. And, he, and the father goes, Imam Sahib, how can you make my daughter rebellious against me? She has to listen to me. I said, no. Why does she have to listen to you? What is the concept of wali? I said, yeah, wali is there. But the wali cannot put on the gun on the daughter and say, hey, you got to marry this. Oh, but he's a very rich man. He earns $250,000. I said, he's earning $250,000. But did you listen to what she said? She said, he doesn't pray five times a day. Sometimes. What does sometimes mean? When I get a chance, I pray. I said, this $250,000, it'll be okay today. But tomorrow when he starts drinking khamar, when he, tomorrow when he starts taking drugs, tomorrow when he starts doing zina with other women, you, you the same father who forced her, would come to my office and say, Imam, please save my daughter marriage. The father, tsk, speechless. Chupoke. I talk reality. I see so many people in this mazir and also in mazir Valley. So many people I see every day. You don't know how much I'm exposed to people's private lives. And wallah azim, I am requesting you, begging you, please marry your daughters and sons based on deen first. Because I've seen those marriages that are on deen, they are protected. Because what does deen mean? Both the boy and the girl will fear Allah. Even in the khutbah to nikah, I do the nikah many times, we decide the, the, the khutbah to nikah. In khutbah to nikah, the, the sunnah, the maslum khutbah, what did Rasulullah recite? The first ayah of Surah Nisa and the 23rd ayah of Surah Azab. And what are these three, two ayahs saying? Ya ayyuhal nas, ittaqu rabbakum alladhi khalakum min nafsin wahida. Oh human beings, fear Allah. Why Rasulullah choose this ayah in khutbah to nikah? Because at nikah, he wants to tell husband and wife, both spouse, fear Allah, ittaqullah. If you have taqwa, you will save the marriage. If there's no taqwa, there is no way marriage will be saved. I am seeing divorces on a daily basis. Young couples divorces. Married three months, two months, six months, divorce. Divorce. Married one year, divorce. Nobody's going to come and tell you. You're not going to hear this on CNN. You will not find this in Google. You will not even find this in AI. Even if you ask Chad Jibidi, how many Muslim divorces in America? He will not tell you. But you ask any imam in all over America, they'll tell you the number one thing that we see as imam in masjid, talaq, 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 talaq. Every day somebody calls. Imam Sahib, I said to my wife, talaq, 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 three times. So is it three or is it one? I say it's Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the... Hey, what are you talking about? I say, you made a joke. You made a talaqa joke, so let me joke with you. You're not serious about it. This is a very big word. 
our akabirin, our past predecessors, they used to say, don't even bring the ta on the tongue. Forget about the whole word. Don't even bring the D of the English word. This is how we were raised in our generation. Today, I see young couples, they're freely saying this on their tongue. Freely they use this word, and I'm shocked. I'm asking the parents also. Train your children. Train your 20-year-old, 30-year-old sons and daughters. They look, before you marry, look, beta, beti, habibti, habibi. Don't even think about the D word. It's not in your dictionary. Throw it out. Once you're married, you got to live together, stick together. We're not doing temporary marriages. A lot of these young boys and girls say, oh, Imam, sahab, it doesn't matter. If it doesn't work out, we'll get separated. I said, what? Before you're marrying someone, you have this mindset, it doesn't work out, we'll get separated. What kind of mindset is this? Do you think the marriage will work? May Allah have mercy on our ummah. May Allah have mercy on our parents. May Allah have mercy on our young boys and girls. Let us make dua and end, inshallah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qinaat al-nar. Rabbana atina fi quluwuna ma'adhana wa hablana bil ladunka rahman wa ta'ala wa hab. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qinaat al-nar. Allahumma irham alayna wa irham ala jameel muslimi fi kulli makin ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma irhamu ya rabbil alameen. Ya rahamu al-rahimin. Ya rahamu al-rahim. اللهم ثبتنا عند صراط المستقيم رب العالمين اللهم احفظنا واحفظ اولادنا من كل الشر والشرور يا رب العالمين ومن كل سيئات يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظنا واحفظ عائلاتنا يا رب العالمين واحفظ كل اولادنا يا رب العالمين يا رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه رحمه كريم now you can have dinner inshallah you have 30 minutes to finish the food race In case we don't finish the food in time, we can delay Isha by five minutes, no problem. Five, seven minutes.